Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to discuss the famous Krishnard's inverted U hypothesis. Let's see what it is. Move to the idea of the Krishnard's inverted U hypothesis. We could see that this idea has been developed by a famous person, Simon. Kuznets. Okay, so this hypothesis says that the idea that economic development, this is something that is associated with a specific pattern of inequality. So the relationship between economic development and income inequality. This is what is established by Kuznets hypothesis. Relationship between economic development and income inequality. This is what is established by the famous Kuznets inverted U hypothesis. As per this hypothesis. Income inequality, if you look into that, this will be increasing initially. So, uh, this is very important, okay, over, over time, this is very important. So, the income inequality, it is income inequality that will be increasing. When, the, when in, this is what happens initially. Initially means, this is a period of the initial stage of development stage of development so it says that during the initial stage of development income inequality would be increasing then what happens that over a period of time it reaches maximum income inequality reaches maximum so this is this means uh, during the middle stage of development whatever this is something after some some time so this happens during the initial stage and this happens after some time then also there would be changes over time and at the end the income inequality begins to decline. So, this is a period when the country becomes prosperous. So, this is a period when nation becomes, becomes developed or prosperous, whatever. Okay, so this kind of a relationship between income inequality and development is being established by Simon Kuznets in his inverted U shape hypothesis. So he says that in the initial stages of development, the nation would be in the initial stage of industrialization. The industrialization would be just beginning. At that time, there would be increase in income inequality. And why? Because the workers will be moving from agriculture jobs to industrial jobs. So you know that when it comes to agriculture jobs, agriculture jobs are, these are low paid jobs compared to industrial jobs. So once there is industrialization, once the industrialization industrialization starts in the economy people began to move from the traditional primitive way of cultivation agriculture sector to modern sophisticated mission based production the industrial sector so we could see that as the nation becomes more developed the income inequality would be declined because now what happens is that the workers 
will be having more advantages what they will be educated they will be trained then they might have received some better job opportunities things like that having said just see the graphical explanation of the inverted u quesnet hypothesis so here you will be look measuring the income per capita along the x axis and inequality is something that you measure along the y axis as you could see from the figure the graph is an inverted u shaped curve you could see that uh, we are here what you can do is that we can uh, compare different points on this particular graph let's take a point here then you can take a point here then you can take a point here okay we have three points let uh, if you need again you can take a point somewhere here okay so we have points a b c and d so we are saying that over time initially this is the first period okay we are considering initially the inequality is this much and the income that we have in the economy is this much isn't it so this much of income inequality is there as a result of development so this is how uh, the income shows our development and this is shows our this shows the inequality part okay so whenever a nation progresses initially at this particular point it has got this much of economic development and this much of inequality isn't it now you could see that as time progress this is something that is increasing so this line is a positively sloped curve where we could see there exists a direct direct relationship between income inequality and development so till here till this point the curve is a positively sloped one and at this point what happens is that you will be having a certain level of inequality which would be the maximum inequality and this happens at a certain point of income or certain point of development after reaching this maximum point so this is a maximum point now after this point if development happens then what happens to income inequality you can see that there is a negative slope a declining trend so here at this particular point you have inequality that is equal to this much and you have this much development again see this see this point at this point you might have an inequality that is that is somewhere here okay that is somewhere here and you will be having a growth of development equal to this much okay so that is how you could see that uh, till it reaches maximum point till the curve reaches maximum point there is such a positive relationship between income and inequality but after reaching maximum point you could see a declining trend a negative relationship between income and inequality so the income inequality would be rising during the early phase of expansion but after reaching maximum it would be declining the idea of kushner's curve is something that is still being used in various various arenas it has got a lot many application that doesn't mean that the theory is true in all the cases the theory has received a lot many criticism from various angles why and here onwards we are going to answer that question why kushner's curve received so many criticisms till now you can see a lot many debates happening which surround 
the concept of kristneska and the debates are basically made over whether the pattern that is established by kristner curve actually holds true in all the cases so here we could see that no kristner curve is not true in all the cases especially whenever you take into consideration the role of certain aspects we could see that kristner curve neglected the role of these for example if you take the case of government policies you know that government policy plays a very important role in influencing the relationship between economic development and in income inequality but kristner curve is not taking this into consideration and also we could see that the pattern that is described in kristner curve is not universal because even though some cultural factors to influence economic development and its relationship with income inequality kristner curve is not taking that too into consideration so you have to see that kristner curve neglects so many so many uh, factors other factors that too will be influencing the relationship between economic development and income inequality for the very same reason you cannot say that kristner curve is a perfect theory that is why various economists criticize this theory okay so we have considered some ideas related to kristner curve or simon kristner's inverted u hypothesis thank you for watching you can like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos also you can join our telegram community by using the link given in the description box also i'll be providing link of our learn economia app you can download that too by using the link given in the description box that's all about today thank you for watching